Hello everyone, welcome back to Conquering Kerbal Space Program. We are currently looking at the Minmus crew swap vessel. Alejandro B. and Doug McCurman are, uh, well, they're on their way back to Kerbin. And they've been on their way back to Kerbin for a long time, like nearly a month, really. Uh, they've, they're coming from Minmus, but they've already made a trip around uh, Kerbin once. I forgot about them. And they've already went around Kerbin once, so they have a huge, very eccentric orbit. Uh, incredibly eccentric. Basically, so eccentric that they are almost out of the, out of the influence. Uh, but, they're on the way back now. I'm not gonna forget about them this time. The problem is, well, it's not really that much of a problem. It could have been a problem. But, the problem is, uh, life support status. Because they've been in space so long in this tiny pod, their hab timers have expired. So, they are tourists. Which means I have absolutely no control over them whatsoever. So, I can't EVA him. Because it says tourists may not disembark the vessel. So they are literally doing nothing. We can take a look at, uh, you know, like their point of view if we want to, though. You know, just trying to check it out, right? You can see Alejandro, what he can see, right? But he's just going to look at it, you know? He's not going to actually engage or anything. He's not going to do anything inside. So we're going to have to control this thing with uh, this antenna. Thankfully, I put a probe and an antenna on this thing. So, uh, yeah, we'll be able to control it, I think, once we get to be close enough to Kerbin. So let's just get ourselves right down in here a little bit more, a little bit closer, a little bit closer. Do we have electric power? We do have electric power, huh? That's, that, I mean, obviously, I think with the solar panels we would have it, but uh, I wasn't actually sure. So we have a signal now. We can control this vessel. So let's set up our maneuver and make sure that we're going to do things right here. Uh, I want to get, let's go ahead and get this alarm gone. I want to get pretty much right on the periapsis here. And I want to make a maneuver to get ourselves brought right in. Alright, back in Kerbin's atmosphere. Going around, around and around and around we go. Let's uh, turn this to be radial out like this. And I'm just going to go ahead and pop this off. And then we'll go ahead and reface this way. That will get that thing to be way down there way away from us. It might even burn up. We'll see. Uh, and we don't need that anymore, so that's gone. So now we're just left with this. And because we have this nice uh, lighter body, if you will, a lot less mass, as well as this flat edge, uh, we'll probably slow down a little bit faster. All right, we're coming around. We're entering the atmosphere again. I'm not sure we're going to get completely captured on this pass, but... Uh, this number is totally going to drop enough for us to get captured on the next pass for sure. Uh, we've got the mission control right here. So we're not going to hit it this time. But if we do get another pass, we might even like land really close to it. It might be over here when we're back. So that'd be kind of cool. Like unintentionally landing right where the KSC is would be pretty cool, I think. All right, we're going into the atmosphere here, and it looks like we are captured. So we are not coming back to space. This is our final descent. Please keep your arms and legs in the vehicle at all times. Uh, I am a little bit concerned about losing this antenna, but uh, throughout the course of going around this, uh, we must have went low enough. Maybe it's 50K, I don't know. Uh, we must have went low enough at some point for these guys to kick back on because they have EVA possibilities again. They're not tourists anymore, so uh, they're not reading as tourists anyway. So I guess I look at this though. Yeah, and it says they're starving, but it says they're not tourists. So okay. Hab timers have been all restored and everything, so we're just gonna come on down. This antenna might snap, but we have local control if these guys are actually active. So I guess we're fine. What? Why? Why? Why are you? No, 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 no. Move around, move around, move around, move around, move around. Spread the heat out, spread the heat out. <laughs> Why are you going this direction? What? Why did you do that? I'm so confused. This is the heavy end, is it not? How the hell? That makes no sense at all. Okay, then. Well, uh, pull the chute, please. There we go. That was a little bit scary, I gotta say. I was just a little bit... I was pretty scared there <laughs> for a second. Because I was like, holy shit, this thing is about to explode for no reason. Like, at the last minute. 
I don't know what the hell is going on with that, but we're shutting off flight computer. I'll tell you that right now. What in the world was that? Okay, well, down on the ground. And final deployment. And we'll come down nice and soft. Less than, th yeah, less than four meters per second, so. Okay, these guys are safe. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and land these guys, recover them, and whatever, and they'll be on the surface. And then uh, we are gonna go to Duna today. This is this is the actual mission I want to do today. These guys they need to be rescued, and like I had a four-hour counter up here for the maneuver and stuff, so I wanted to get that done. But this is what we want. What I want to do today, I want to take and go ahead about 16 days and get our delivery, our, our satellite delivery vessel going and see about getting some satellites into orbit of Duna. All right, everybody, welcome back to the uh, the map view here, the system view. Uh, this is what I actually want to do for this episode. It's this, this is our Duna sat delivery module or our Duna sat delivery satellite that was up. It's a mouthful. Uh, this, you might remember this, this has all the satellites we're gonna need to make a great network around Duna collect science around Duna, do everything we need to do around Duna. This is the awesome vessel we needed. Uh, there's actually a couple of science experiments that we can do, and I'm going to use the reusable ones if I can. So how about we get log visual observations? Now, there's a 23 second delay. I'm going to put this over here because there's a lot of windows over this way. Um, there's a 23 second delay on this vessel because we're using remote tech, remember? So we can't just do things. We're going to have to use the flight computer for pretty much everything we want to do with this vessel because it's going to take 23, 24 seconds for it to do anything. So I said log visual observations, and it just now did. That's 15 science. We can get all of it. So I'm going to go ahead and transmit that. Make sure we have the power to do it. It looks like we do just fine. There we go. So I need a whole bunch of science because I need to unlock the manufacturing, the facility, the, the building that I need, the module that I need on Minmus to start actually manufacturing things. And so getting these science experiments done is going to be a super big help. Can we do imaging data from this? I wonder. Uh, then I think I want to try doing... Another, like all the reusable experiments, I want to do all of them. The problem is these two experiments are kind of facing the body. So I'm going to have to wait to do these until these uh, satellites are kind of on their own, I think. Uh, but we can do like these ones. I could do this one, I think. Yeah, probably. Yeah, there's nothing in the way of that one. Uh, we could do this one, but that might hit the solar panel. 17 and a half science is pretty good. Um... That might hit the solar panel. I don't really want to retract the solar panel. But we're way up high right now, right? Like, this is uh, the area we're in, right, is oh, we're over the Midland Sea, according to our biome. But we're in space high over Duna. So I want to do all the stuff that's high over Duna as much as possible. We're not going to be able to, like, collect it. So we're just going to hit send on this and get the 20%. And I think, is that kind of it for our experiments? I could do these, but like, again, it's going to get in the way of the solar. You know what? Let's just retract this one solar panel. And once this is retracted, I should be able to get this uh, magnetometer to do its thing and get it log this data from high over Duna. I don't think any other experiments are really going to happen. I guess we could come over here. We do have like pressure scans and stuff, right? Like I did pack that stuff on this, didn't I? I feel like I should have. What's this? This is a pressure. Yeah, this is the Presmat barometer. So let's do that. And we're also going to do that. So now that that's that, now that this is out of the way, we should be able to just push that out and do it. Uh, What else can we do while we're here? up in high space. I could do one of the goo experiments. I have, how many of them do I have? Just two, right? One here. Yeah, one of them is going to be used high over Duna. One of them is going to be like lower over Duna. This is 50 science. Uh, that's great. So we can do, this is seven and a half, which is like whatever, but this is seven and a half, seven and a half, and this is 50. Bam. I love it. 
What is going on here? This is interesting. What What is actually happening here? How do we have so many of these experiments going off? I didn't open up all of these, did I? Wait a minute. Oh, man. All, all the goo is... Hold on. Reset that goo. Reset the goo. All the goo needs to be reset. I don't I don't want to transmit the goo. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not sure about that. But I have all the rest of them, right? You know what I probably did? I probably said perform all science. That's probably what I did. Uh, anyway, we can probably toggle this back, I think. Yeah. And then once that gets pulled back, we can reopen this. Um, we can reopen the solar panel. I'm going to wait just a few seconds. That should be enough time. So let's extend the solar panel as well. So working around the signal delay is going to be a chore, but I've had a little bit of practice doing it. So uh, we did a live stream series with Sarnus where I was trying to put a satellite network around Sarnus. And the only problems I had with that network were power, like getting enough power. And like in the end, uh, I, I ended up basically, well, I ended up failing the mission basically. But if I had a little bit more knowledge of how the power consumption would work around that distance away from the sun, uh, and at, at the same time, if I also I uh, had more satellites on the single launched SSTO that I had. Uh, it would have been great, but I didn't. Let's toggle these collectors back too. I probably should do one goo experiment, but they're only seven and a half science. It's still like the the idea is like, what am I going to use it for, right? Like, what am I going to use these goo experiments for? I wanted one around Duna and one around uh, Ike. I think that's what it was. Yeah, I'm going to wait to use the goo. We can always do goo experiments when we bring Kerbals to Duna. We can always do that, do the goo then. Then we actually get to keep all of it. Because this is like a, a physical experiment we have to take with us, right? All right, I think we're ready to go. I, I, I would have liked to have gotten these experiments, but I just don't think it's... I don't think it's, like, worth taking this off right now. So this is our path. It looks to me like we're actually going to get... Oh, we're actually going to get around Ike. This is interesting. So if I was to let go of some of these satellites, they might even be able to just do their own thing as we pass by Ike. That'd be a cool thing. What if we drop one of these sats off? I'd have to do it in a balanced way, though, wouldn't I? That's the hard part, is doing it in a balanced way. Because if I do it... I'd like to drop this off, right? But I'd also like to drop like one of these off. I don't think I could do that in a balanced way. I'm not sure that's possible. Because like each one of these are paired, but they're not paired to go to the same place. Like these are going to different places. These are going to different places. Uh, these are mostly going to the same place. I think they're I think these I think three of these are going to Duna, and then these three are going to Ike. So there's three here and three here. Uh, those are going to Duna and Ike, respectively. And then we have each one of these is going to Duna and Ike, so one each. Same thing with this. This is one each. And then this over here is one each. If I drop off, like, the two in the back, that might be kind of nice. If we just get rid of, like, these two in the back, just eject these, and let them do their own maneuver and capture themselves, I wonder how much Delta V they have. They probably have a lot. I, I bet they have enough to get themselves captured. How much does it take to get themselves captured? If I wanted to, say, zo zone in really quick and focus my view on Ike, if I wanted to get them... Oh, look at this. this is like, it's already polar, too. Which is kind of not where I want them. It's where I want the resource scanner, though. If I wanted a resource scanner to just be dropped off on its way, what would I have to do to make that happen? What kind of uh, Delta V am I looking at here to get captured around Ike? It's a lot. It's it's not it's not a small amount. Not a small amount. It's 900. But it's going to cost more to to transfer over to Ike later and then get captured, right? It's it's probably going to cost more, I would think. Maybe not because we would have roughly the same path of travel around Ike already to where this this here, we're kind of like going straight through it, and we have to slow ourselves down a lot. But if we're going to transfer to it with the home and transfer, then we're going to have roughly the same speed. 
So it, it would take a lot less to get captured then. I think I'm going to take and risk it and just not drop off a satellite here. Because I'm not sure how much Delta V that those little tanks have. But I'm kind of thinking I probably don't have enough. Yeah, we're going to get rid of that one. So this is the maneuver we're doing. It's 708 meters per second to get captured around Duna. Okay, we got one minute until the maneuver. Last chance to check anything, or check everything, I guess. I don't think there's really anything to do. You know, there's a couple of science experiments that are bleep beeping at me, but like other than that, that's it, you know? So it doesn't matter. I think we're good. So we're going to let this flight computer do its thing. It's going to get us in an orbit that looks like this yellow circle, uh, this little yellow orbit here. It has a slight inclination, but it's fairly close to circularized. Uh, the apoapsis is around 7, 750, and the periapsis will be around 720-ish, I think, right? 718, okay, fine. So, like, it's basically circular, and then what we'll do is we'll start ejecting these satellites one at a time from the main satellite they will assume their own power responsibilities and their own antennas and stuff of course uh, and then we'll individually adjust their orbits um, one at a time to get them in the proper positions so i'm not sure the inclination is really that big of a deal and honestly i don't think i'm really going to bother correcting it because it's just a slight inclination and around duna it matters a lot less than it matters around a larger body so i'm just going to leave it like let it go it'll be fine so this burn is going to take a while. It's a six minute burn. It will take some time to happen. But when it's done, we'll finally have our communications array, our package, I guess, uh, will be successfully delivered. And then we can start the real work. And that's getting the satellite network around Duna and getting it working. I, I've been waiting to do this. Um, the problem is like a lot of people who play KSP, like a lot of people who have series is going on in this are not doing it in career mode, right? They're doing it in sandbox. The advantage of sandbox is that you don't have contracts and all that stuff, of course. But if you're not doing life support, and a lot of these guys aren't doing life support either, then you don't have to worry about your Kerbals as long as they're safe on the surface, right? I could leave my Kerbals on the Minmus base indefinitely, and they'll still be there a couple of years from now, just as happy as they were before. So I can't, I couldn't just time accelerate to this part. I've been wanting to do Duna and not, not Minmus, but I think Minmus is an essential part of our overall objective. Minmus is going to play a huge role in allowing me to deploy and launch vessels to faraway places very cost effectively and to not have to worry about the money. If it, if I was doing sandbox, I wouldn't even need Minmus. I'd be like, whatever, I don't care. I could use Minmus as like a, a testing ground and then just send off whatever I wanted in all directions. I wouldn't need Minmus. Um, but because I'm using career mode, I wanted Minmus to be fully operational and functional. I think it's very close to having that. It's able to get all the resources it needs to now. It's able to get all the life support resources that it needs and convert them. Uh, and to the best of my knowledge, the only thing it's missing is the uh, assembly, the orbital or the mobile assembly plant that I need to, to actually finalize and make all the raw materials and the, the refined materials that I need, which requires a thousand science for me to unlock. And so that's why the 499 that I have here is uh, pretty good progress to that. Uh, but, but if I was not doing life support and I was not doing career mode, then what I could have done is just time accelerated, and, you know, warped through a year or whatever it was. Uh, and like, boom, we just would have done this a long time ago, but I, I just can't do that. I wanted the infrastructure in place and I need to take time. So like, for example, when I want to do Eve in 202 days, I can't just time accelerate 202 days and then launch Eve because all my Kerbals that are in space, they'll be tourists. They'll be useless. And I want to build my Eve launch vessel that I'm sending up, which will be very similar to this. It's almost an exact copy of this actually. Um, I want to launch this from Eve, or sorry, from Minmus to Eve. Um, I'm going to have a different engine system on it, I think, because I don't need as much Delta V. I don't, this is overkill on the Delta V. I don't need this much. Uh, so we'll probably have a better, a bigger, better engine system on it um, and maybe a different packaging assortment. I don't know. Um, but 
I don't like the six minute burns, right? I want it, I want a little bit quicker burns. So uh, I don't know, maybe not. Maybe I can just build this. It doesn't take that many material kits. The most expensive parts are the science. Like this is a very expensive vessel. This 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 deployment here, I forget how much this cost. Uh, I'll have to look back in the episodes to know how much this cost, but it was not cheap because all these science experiments are very expensive. Uh, so there's a lot of equipment on this. Uh, and when this all gets separated out, it will be, I think, a really, really cool uh, cool delivery model, actually, I think. It's a, very, it's a very stable method of delivery, right? Because these two satellites will probably be the first to deploy. Uh, then we'll have to deploy these two. Uh, and then we'll get them away from the vessel, right? Uh, when I'm deploying these two, I'm going to get these solar panels tucked in so that these don't accidentally hit these. Uh, I'll probably do the same to these. So I'll basically tuck all my solar panels in and then to get these out. Uh, I think the strength on these decouplers is is lowered, I thought. Well, I mean, I can always limit the thrust here, right? So, like, we can do that. This is just the... Oh, wait, no, this is the engine. Did I click the engine or the... Yeah, I clicked the engine. I don't want to do that. Let's bring this back to 100. <laughs> um, anyway, so, and again, there's there's a delay, right? There's a 23-second delay on this. So the thrust limiter is not down yet, but it's about to be right about now. So now it's at 2, right? And now I have to wait for the signal to process, the 23-second delay that we have. I have to wait for that to happen before the thrust comes back up because that's just the way this is going to work. And everything we do has this delay. All right, about 10 seconds left in the burn. Things are looking good. Right on target, right on point. Exactly as expected. There we go. So, stable orbit around Duna now. Now we can start deploying a lot of these other little satellites. Now we need to make sure that they maintain a connection to this, uh, which means just sticking around and being close by, but eventually these satellites will lose connection with this because they're going to get out of range, um, but that's just the way it is. So let's take and deploy. We want to do this. We want to do this like mirrored, right? We always want to deploy the same ones every time. This is going to make it a little bit challenging because I want three of these to be in orbit of here and then three of these to be in orbit of Ike and I can't actually what will probably happen is these will make a maneuver on their own from this current orbit to go to Ike individually it's probably what I'll do because I don't really want to mess with like balance so let's take uh, we want to extend this this antenna so we'll activate this antenna these are all commutatron 32 so they've got great range uh, let's activate this one as well actually Let's do that. The biggest issue I'm foreseeing is this. This launching uh, in this direction. It's the biggest problem because there's a chance that this will hit this. So I do want to see the force of this ejection. So this antenna should go up now. There we go. And now I can go ahead and uh, decouple this, basically. We should have fuel in here, right? Yep, we do. Okay, so let's go ahead and decouple this. Again, 23 seconds. We'll wait for that. This is already out now, too. So let's just time accelerate to the decoupling. Here we go. And it's out. Okay, so it's very gentle. Good. That's what I wanted to know. So I, I did I did uh, limit these. It's been a while since I've made this. So it's like I wasn't sure if I, you know, neutered the force on this or not. But I did. Okay, we have a connection because this is communicating with this, which is then communicating directly with Kerbin. So when I get away from this engine, which is a little, little bit, it's gonna take a bit, but it's fine. It's very gentle. We're gonna get away from this engine and then we're gonna ex extend all the solar panels. Whoops, why did I do that? Here, extend all solar, there we go. And once again, we're gonna wanna have the flight computer out because I wanna be able to see the timings for all these deployments. So uh, we've got about 12 more seconds until these solar panels come out. We'll just time accelerate and the panels are out. Now, let's take and see energy usage. I want to make sure, good, we have enough. It's it's so hard to tell. Like when, I, when we did the Sarnus mission uh, in the live streams, I was so shocked by how little 
like solar panels are basically completely ineffective they do they do absolutely nothing that has me a little bit worried uh with regards to uh getting a planet on elu or getting a base on elu that has me very worried about that but we're gonna have to do alternative fuel sources we'll probably do nuclear power we'll get some R a whole bunch of rtgs probably um you know there's a lot of experimental powers that we can run with this so Okay, we are independent and free to do what we wish. And I'm thinking probably what I want to do is set up a maneuver to get, uh, let's say, like 600. We could just stay way out here. You know, we could. We could just stay way out here. I think I'm going to make a maneuver here in four minutes. And let's bump ourselves up a bit, actually. I want to get ourselves like circularized here um i need to go the other way for that though don't i sure do let's get ourselves circularized around like seven is like seven fifteen or so so right about uh keep going keep going keep going oh we can't do 715 because i'm already higher than 715 we could try 720 Uh, let's zoom in like this. So 720 would be about here. Uh, we're going to have to activate our engine in order to make that happen. But we can face the node. Again, 23 second delay. I'm going to have to activate the engine, which means hitting spacebar. And again, toggling the stage, 27 or 23 second delay. I'm going to keep reiterating that in case people don't understand just how complicated this process is. Like it's, it's really, it's way more difficult than just stock KSP. Managing signal delay with remote tech is, it's really something I want to challenge. I want this challenge. I really want to tackle it. It's something that's very, very, uh, whoops. Um, okay, uh, potential issue is we might hit that vessel. I think we're clear. I don't think we'll have this problem. Um, how far away is the maneuver? It's two. If I say to execute this maneuver, it's gonna happen in two minutes. I think we'll be fine. We're heading that direction. I don't think we're going to hit this. That's a pretty gutsy call. But it looks to me like we have the room. And we're getting more and more room as time goes on. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and say this is fine. Let's um, time accelerate it here a bit. And yeah, we have plenty of room now. We'll be fine. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Wait, what do you mean there's no engine to carry out the maneuver? I I staged this. I Did I not stage this? I staged the engine. Activate the engine. Okay, so apparently the stage didn't actually happen. I have to right-click it. Okay, I mean, that's, that's, that's fine. I guess that's fine. It should start executing the, the maneuvers immediately when this engine turns on, I would think. There it goes. Yep. That's all she wrote, so off we go. And we're pretty close. We had a little bit of a delay on when we executed the maneuver, so our apoapsis is 720 uh, and 171. So we are going to have to make an adjustment there, but that's fine. We're going to want another maneuver at the apoapsis, probably just before it, because we're on our way up right now, right? Yeah. So if we do an a, a maneuver here, just before it, and we go f this way, we might be able to circularize ourselves around 720 after all. So can we get this to be, just move this around a little bit. Can I get this to be 720 on both sides? Like exactly 720 on both sides. That puts periapsis at 720, which is what I want. Cause I can adjust apoapsis when I'm at periapsis. So if I move this like that, that should be fine. So let's execute that maneuver. That's in 18 minutes. So we have that in the flight computer. In 15 minutes, we'll have an alarm for that. Great. We can now switch back to the main craft and do it all over again. <laughs> Isn't that great? Now, I want to do it all over again, but at the same time, I want some distance between these satellites, right? I don't want them to be super close to each other. So what I might do instead is take one of the other ones that are going to Ike and plan a maneuver to Ike. So I think that's what I'm going to do instead. So let's get one of these other ones that are going to Ike. How about we can take, 
I'm really nervous about this. Like, if this ejects this way really hard, it, it, that, I'm just worried about that. Um, but, at the same time, maybe we do one of these. I'm going to need a way to... I'm going to need a way to communicate, though. Right? Because I think actually one of these big ones is supposed to go to Ike. I'm pretty sure that's the way that's supposed to be. I'm going to do one of the big ones, I think. So if I... Another thing I'm really, really worried about is these solar panels. They're really close. Yeah, see, look, when I... Yeah. See, the reskin did this. This is the reskin. When I built this, I didn't have Venstock revamp. And then when I made Venstock revamp, this happened. Because I know that these were spaced out appropriately before I revamped this. So um, we're, we're probably going to lose... We're probably going to lose some solar panels on this. Hopefully, we don't lose a ton of them. Maybe it's just one of them on one side of them. Uh, but we're probably going to lose them. I'm going to I'm gonna quick save this just to see. Because you never know what will happen. But I'm going to take this. Um, this is the decoupler. Yep. If I... Let's make sure this antenna is on. It is. Yep. It's communicating directly with Kerbin. If I take this and decouple it. Right, there's that. Uh, let me make sure that actually happens. Yep, so in 15 seconds, we'll know. I'm pretty sure we're going to lose this solar panel because it's right up against the surface here. So we'll probably see the panels fly everywhere. But as long as we can keep the other ones, I think we'll be, we'll be okay. It's going to be a really big challenge. I'm not sure because I'm not sure how much power these... Oh, shit, that just flew way out there. Oh my god, that's got some distance to it. This one does, but we didn't lose all the solar panels. So let's extend all the solar. Um, let's make sure again. I need to do the flight computer every single time to see what it up. I want to extend this as well. So we'll activate that. And then we've got this other one. We got these other ones here. I think one of them is going to be pointing at active vessel. The other is going to be pointing at Duna. Which is kind of weird, but we're going to go with it. <laughs> It'll work. There we go. Awesome. So we'll actually see how much power we have. Okay, we are... We're doing good with power. Good. We're doing good with power. Now, do I have enough power to have these go? To have these run? Let's find out. I'll do a no, We'll do no target. We want to do, let's say, active vessel and activate. And then this one, we want to have pointed at Duna. Like the body of Duna. Duna. Here, Duna. And we'll activate this one as well. And let's see what our power consumption is like. Like, I measured out all this stuff before leaving and before, you know, all that. But when I'm measuring it out, I, I don't know if it's, like, actually taking into consideration the distance from the sun. You know? Like, how much power really gets consumed that way. But we'll see. So far, so good. And that's with a rotation on this. I'm not letting it... I'm not going to point it properly yet. And it looks like both are activated. And even with this rotation on the vessel, it looks like everything is fine. Cool. Everything is awesome. <laughs> All right. So, I want this to have a maneuver to Ike. I want the, I want to get this transferred to Ike. So, if I'm going to do that... I'm probably going to need to do it over here in an hour. Uh, my inclination is way off, though. Let's make this the target. Yeah, we're going to need to correct the inclination first. That makes sense, doesn't it? It's just like anything else we've ever done. So uh, it looks like we're six degrees off. We have 1,900 meters per second of delta V in this. So <laughs> way over-engineered on the engine, which is good. We want it to be more over-engineered. Uh, not under engineered. So let's put a maneuver on the descending node. And we're going to ascend on the descending node. And bring it. Wait, is that the right way for this? Because it doesn't look like it's changing anything. Make sure you're on the descending node. Yeah, it's changing it. Okay. Up. Oh. So Ike is basically equatorial, right? So if I go to zero degrees, I should be good. Right? That's how it works. Pretty sure that's how it works. Zero degrees. Yep. 
that's what I needed. Back down. Nope, uh, the other way. Uh, nope, the, <laughs> the other way. Uh, it looks to me like it's got a little bit of, you know what, that's 0.2 degrees, not a big deal. That's going to be fine. That is going to be 58 meters per second. So let's get a maneuver set. I don't know why I'm doing that. Let's get the maneuver set like this. Tell it to execute it. So there's a whole bunch of multitasking happening here. And for sure, this is going to be time, time lapsed for the rest of this. So um, probably going to have the next episode will be... Yeah, I think the next episode we're going to have a time lapse essentially or a, a fast paced edited video of all of this setup stuff because unless you guys want to see it do you guys want me to do it in real time or do you want you know a shorter video like let me know what you guys want and i'll just deliver it i have to do it anyway regardless of whether i'm doing it in real time and talking over it or i'm just doing it and then editing it later regardless i have to do the mission in the same pace uh the only difference is how fast you get to see it and how many videos it'll take to show it all to you so uh, let me know. Comments down below. I think that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, it's not a whole lot done, but um, we rescued some Kerbals. This is now in orbit of Duna, which is pretty nice. We've got one satellite on its way to getting to its final like circularization, if you will, the final resting place for that satellite, and then we'll time everything else around that first one. Uh, and this one is going to be on its way to on its, on its way to, uh, to Ike. And then we'll do the same thing with three more satellites that are on this thing. We'll send those over to Ike, and they can communicate with this thing when they get there. So uh, that's going to do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm Charlie. We will see you next time on Conquering Gerbil Space Program. Bye-bye.